observability versus monitoring. So in observability, what we're looking for is as a human being, being able to answer questions based on the data that we've collected from a variety of different ways of like instrumenting code or perhaps gathering data, logs, metrics, events, so on and so forth from our entire system. So that's different from monitoring. Monitoring is when you look at questions or you look at data from questions that you could have uh, answered well ahead of time. Uh, with, with, with that in mind, you create the data. So in other words, things like what CPU utilization, uh, you know, memory consumption, you can see that I'm from an ops perspective, but whatever that may be, you can answer that ahead of time. So then you instrument your code and then out comes the answer at any given point in time. It's a little bit different from observability. Now, with that said, when we're observing our applications, Denise, how did you do that in your past, uh, in, in products you've worked on in the past? How did you create that data, if you will, to have some level of observability uh, with applications? Yeah, I mean, in the past, I've, I come from the context center world. And so when I was in the beginning doing a lot of like the monolith kind of applications, we would add trace log. So we'll have the regular logging and then we're going to have trace and the trace can be configured depending on like what you want to set on your trace configuration. And the trace is going to be able to, like the name says, trace through where the code is going, trace through where everything goes. Um, in a context in a world, think calls. So lots of calls are going on. And so it's very difficult to be able to isolate a set of logs to this particular call because everything's happening at the same time. And so with logging, um, you know, the code, the code has to have all of it. If it's this trace level is on, then you trace that. And so um, from a debugging perspective, which you obviously have to do when you are working on your building your code, but also in the unfortunate case of customers having issues and you need to go and debug all of it, it became really difficult because you would need to go and grip lots and lots of logs. And if your call spanned multiple minutes, then your calls, your logs are probably spanning multiple files. And so um, I got really good at grepping things and searching for things, but um, it, it wasn't, it, it's not an easy task. Now, how would you compare that to using tools today? So for example, tracing and using something like Jaeger or what have you to look at traces of what's going on, especially now with microservices in mind, whether you've implemented that or not, but at least if you have the tools and being able to visualize those things versus the good old grep command, how, how would you compare those two? I mean, like anything, right? Would we want to go and my daughter's nine. She likes, you. now I noticed there's a lot of graphic novels. So would you rather read a 100 page book or would you rather see a graphic novel or cliff notes that goes and just makes everything a lot easier, cleaner, visually easier to see, um, more fun to see. So of course, all of these tools like Jaeger being able to go and tell you, trace it out for you. You don't need to go in and like grep all the different logs. It makes life a lot easier. And from a developer perspective, if you really think about it, you're not really, it's not that much more work. You're already checking to see whether or not you need to go and put these traces in. It might actually be less work. Maybe initially when you're migrating over, it'll have to be like, okay, I have to remove this, these traces to the log. I need to go put in this using this particular SDK, like an open telemetry SDK. And initially might be a bit of work, like anything when you're migrating from one to another, right? When you're moving the house, it's always a lot more work in the beginning, but as you're moving along, um, let's just say that's already all implemented. Honestly, it might actually be easier because you won't need to be the one that needs to decide whether or not is this tracing on, is this tracing off? That can all be handled with whatever telemetry tools that you are using. So um, telemetry isn't e just for after the product's been shipped, after the product's been in production, I mean, think about it, how it could be used from a development perspective. When you're developing your code, we typically will put our name or some random one, two, three, or some random characters into the logs to see what, if it's hitting a particular piece of code. So can you imagine if like, you don't need to do that, you have to put in 
if you put in the tracing in general, which will be used for production, you can just go in and look at it from visually from a UI perspective. And so I think that using open telemetry and, and observability is the way to go, the way it makes developers' lives easier too. From my perspective, from the operations viewpoint, if you're looking through the logs and you want to try and figure out like what's going on with something, just whatever that is, that something becomes really challenging to find in logs. If you're, if you're trying, like you were saying, you're using grep and you're, you're, you're going across these different logs to try and figure out what's going on. And then it makes it super difficult when data is unstructured because then your, uh, your queries and, and what you're looking for in the data becomes that much harder. You have to get really good at those regexes <laughs> to try and figure out what those, that unstructured data and logs looks like. But when I'm looking at a trace, I, I could see something that at least gives me an idea of where something might be going wrong because I can look at the trace data and look at uh, a historical you know baseline and then I can say well gee this this is a this part right here is deviating from the baseline and I don't know why mm -hmm. at least there, the trace data is there I can shine a light on it and then hand it over to a team that wrote it and then give me to, to help me out so from an operations perspective it helps me greatly because now i have more visibility into the application code itself and its logs as well as the infrastructure underneath it and at the end of the day i can correlate i can find what is wrong a lot quicker and try to get some attention on that so that ultimately my customer or our customer collectively is doing very well in the end, hopefully I can find those things before the customer even tells me about it. Yeah. So, and it's also easier to alert because now I can set these thresholds and say, well, gee, if something is not going right here uh, based on the baseline, it, it could be anything really. Um, and then I would like to alert on it. And that, that's something else that helps me out, I think, with these newer tools that are available. I mean, ultimately, it just seems like before when everything was logging from both sides of the world, right? From a developer side of the world, even when we need to go in and debug or work on code is very, all right, we're going to run it. We're going to look at the logs. We're going to see where it hit the code. And then we're going to go, okay, it hit it here. Then we're going to go back and do all of that. So if you're able to even just put in all the trace to all the different um, pieces of code, all the different functions, and it's already just there, right? Like it's just there. Then you don't need to go in and add all of this extra stuff. And so the the then was we used to do observability. It's not a new concept. It's we used to do it with logging. We used to do it with tracing within the logging, but it required you to just turn things on, especially if you're going to have a lot of traffic, right? Logging can only handle so much um, storage space versus now of using these telemetry tools, we're able to see things into the code, but from a, a somewhat automated way, right? Like you don't, if you just put it into everything, then it's just gonna show up. It's not, you're not gonna be like, all right, I gotta go and add extra logging. Um, so that's the then versus now and how you can benefit from it. So then you were using, like you were saying, you were it was unstructured developer by developer would yeah. add in certain clues into the messages into the data so that they could differentiate between that and others uh in the same code base but they just want to see their own stuff mm -hmm. um then there were later on you would get into like vendor uh solutions i would say okay well this is one way you could do it as a vendor so like apm solutions for example and then now there's open telemetry so with open telemetry you have kind of the best of all kinds of worlds in other words it's an open standard. You can instrument once and you don't have this vendor lock in. And then there's lots of tools out there on the back end to put it all together and visualize that support it. Um, if you're a developer and maybe you've done the thing from way back in the day and that's still in your code, or maybe you've done a vendor type solution, what would motivate a developer today to go into say open telemetry and, and do it yet again, maybe, or just, implement it for the, from the very beginning to be in, in an open source fashion. Is it worth it that way? Or is it just almost like, hey, look, we already have a system that works, so to speak. It's unstructured. Everybody kind of traces their own way. And, and that just seems to work for me. Or would, it, would, you, would you encourage developers to look at open telemetry and do it once in a standardized way? 
I definitely would recommend going towards open telemetry. I mean, it might not be uh, all of a sudden we're going to change everything. I mean, maybe it's just let's start where, where every new piece of code or every code that we touch, we're going to start migrating that stuff over. Um, because depending on how big your application or how complex your application is, that could be a lot of work to migrate all of it over. Um, depending on how it was written, I mean, possibly can you... Possibly some people might be able to take advantage of um, just the IDEs, right? Some IDEs you can make easy, find, replace, or refactor, or, you know, possibly use some sort of solution to be able to do it. Um, because depending on how you wrote it, maybe some of the arguments or some of the, the code, SDK code, can be similar. Or maybe you can write a wrapper, right? Like there's possible things. You can write some wrapper around the open telemetry SDK and then make it similar enough to, to the way that you were doing things. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be very difficult. It really depends on everybody's application. So it, I can't say like, yes, no. Um, but always think about maybe you can't change it all right now, but why don't you start now, right? Like, Maybe only part of your code ends up being in open telemetry, but slowly but surely you're going to get it all done. Um, thinking about like how some people buy houses that need to be renovated. I'm going to move in first and then I'm going to slowly start changing things. I'm going to renovate my bathroom and then I'm going to go renovate my outdoor space, right? Like some people do it that way versus some people buy the house and renovate everything first before they move in, right? So it, it really depends on the situation, but definitely I think humans are more visual people. Digging through logs is boring. Digging through logs is very, it's very easy to miss. So sometimes you're like, I've looked through these logs, I've looked through these logs, and then somebody else looks and said, here's the line I'm you're looking for, and be like, oh my God, how did I miss it? Because you're grepping through thousands of lines of logs, right? You have to think about it from a perspective production perspective. Um, from a development perspective, no, there's not a billion things going on in your logs. But in a production system, especially with me doing call center stuff, if we have an enterprise company with a lot of people doing calls, um, there it, it's so hard to manage. Great. Well, Thank you so much, uh, Denise, for all your perspective uh, and, and, and showing us a little bit more about what it's like back when with logging and nowadays using things like MELT, which is metrics, events, logging, and tracing. But more importantly, I think, is tracing, which is very close to what logging was back when. Logging is still important today. Only the tracing helps us visualize things in a Gantt chart and so much more uh, with tools like Jaeger and so forth. So what do you think? audience, uh, audience members, if, if it's just something that you use all the time, did you go through the same progression? Have you looked at these tools and do they help you and how could it help others? Would you convince or help, uh, others along the journey to say, Hey, you know what? It, it is important to instrument your code so that you have tracing available to you along with logging and all these other ways of uh, getting data to create observability or data for observability. Well, thank you again for joining us on The Daily Stand-Up, and we will catch you in the next episode. <laughs>